hey everybody real quick um i don't even know if this is going to go up but for those of you that remember about a year actually back in march i think um maybe it was a year ago i, I forget um mike sowers who i know back from poker uh for a long time uh i caught up with him and he was turning me on to this new uh this new uh well it wasn't it wasn't new for him, but like new for me, this this whole virtual horse racing stuff on the blockchain. And I had heard of Zedron, but but I never really got involved in it. And if you guys remember, he kind of walked me through just kind of like what this photo finish live uh, site was. And he walked me through also like how to set a horse up and all this stuff. And uh, when we were talking about it, it seemed like just kind of like a, a kind of a fun thing to do. And I, you know, he taught me how to set up Solana or whatever else, just other stuff that like the people of my age didn't really didn't know how to do. But he got me got me set up there, or whatever, and I had a little bit of fun with it. You know, I did a couple of uh, of live streams with my horse and stuff. I really didn't know if it was going to be a big deal, and I got really pissed because a couple of days ago I went to like register my horse and something. It said that he retired. She retired. I'm like, the hell are you? Eight, retired eight months for? later. Eight Whatever. months later. Let's talk about what you could have earned with this horse, just based on crown value where it's at now. Well, but I before, think, wait, wait, before, I think, before you do that, let me let me introduce, and then we'll then we'll get into yeah. it. And and so I was going to reach out to 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 Mike anyway, say how do I get my money off? How do I buy a new one? Whatever it is. And then I figured, you know, uh, you know, we'll just kind of catch up. And he mentioned to me like some of the money that he's been making doing this stuff. Which let's just say we'll get into it, but let's just say it's a lot more than it was like like six eight months ago. And as much as I could have thought it could have grown. I was legitimately shocked when he told me how much money he was making that he's been making on this. So that's obviously going to be a function number, you know, of, of number one, how good he is at whatever he does. And also obviously how big of a pool of money there is to be made, you know, and, and how big of a pool of money there is to be made is, is a testament to how the industry has grown. So, so why don't you talk a little bit about that? Then we could talk about my stupid horse here <laughs> and, and remind me like what your affiliation was, if, if anything with photo finish live and tell me what photo finish live is right now. Yeah. It just started as an NFT on Solana. I uh, invested, they did their mint September, 2021. Obviously it was pretty peak bull market. I had, I was mining ETH, had Bitcoin, obviously played around a lot in NFTs and it was just some horse pictures that I bought in October. So I did, I bought like about a month after, I think like probably bought like maybe seven to 10 of these horse pictures, got in their discord, learned a little bit about the game. And then February 22, they dropped these fillies. So they had these PFPs that were Colts. Then they dropped PFPs that were fillies. And then February or March of Last year, they had a breeding event where you would create your ticket and that ticket would be your entry into the game, which would create an actual genetic horse. And so most of the NFTs, they basically were vapor airware. And this actually turned into a game. And you talk about how much money could be made. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we would have thought that we got here this fast, even though we were all pretty bullish. And a lot of it is a function of how good the game is. You know, um, I'm going to pause for just a second. I actually okay. Hello? <laughs> yes. Oh, you're here. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll be, I'll, you want to go to the backyard? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can go through the driveway, and then you, you there, there's a fence right up there, and you you, you you open up the fence and go right to the, to the, to the, to the unit. I'll be there in a couple of minutes. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. No well, worries. Welcome to Sheets World. It's a lot, yeah. a lot going on. Uh, what is it? The the yard maintenance or what? Something like that. Something like that. Okay. So so yeah. So so continue. Okay. Um. And so basically, in March, whenever we had talked, it was still the beta, but it was when they first started doing live money. I think like we were doing like ten dollar buy ins and stuff with your horse and. I'd probably, we talked about the big purchase I made, Doc Holiday, which was my stud. We paid 12, I paid $12,000 for him uh, in 12, February. 12,000 US dollars. Yeah. Wow, and he actually, just this month, so far he's been uh, hit. So this is amazing. We had the virtual Kentucky Derby last month. Okay. Doc Holiday's baby won the virtual Kentucky Derby. Oh, so wow. he won $1,500. He won the first, we call him Gen 1, because the tickets that we uh, got, which was Doc Holliday and all the others, they were considered Generation Zero. So they were the first horses. 
all the horses that are ever going to be born in the game came from these horses. Um, and just looking at Doc Holliday today, he I charged 375 to breed with him. You can breed 35 times. So far, he's gotten 25 breeds. Wow. Uh, yeah. And for his lifetime, I think he's at like 30 or 40 K now earnings. Uh, That's just amazing. breeding. Yeah. And so he's not even the top one. There's already a, a colt that has eclipsed a hundred thousand in breeding fees. And actually, when you look at the earning power of the horses, the value of the horses, even those breeding fees are actually pretty relatively good value because even this week, Monday, uh, we had foals day, which is when all the new foals are born. And the way the game works is when your baby is born, it's zero years old. And each month represents a year wow. in the horse life. The and end. so at nine, right. like you experienced, you're forced to retire. And oh. so that is part of why I became so amazed by the game, the supply demand, the way it worked. Their whole slogan is as real as it gets. Like Zed, you race like 15 times a day, blah, blah, blah. These, you basically can race them like once every 24 to 48 hours. Yeah. You know, you can't just race, race, race. And then also in order to breed, you have to retire. So you can't just race and breed at the same time. So the population can't just go absolutely nuts and stuff. Um, and so, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I definitely didn't expect we would be this uh, far along with everything I'm looking for. A quote. And, and when you say we, are you, are you, are you like an investor? Are you like a pedal? Yeah, I mean, so... Basically, I was an initial person in the NFT. I have no affiliation with the team at all other than I support them. I, you know, in poker, I never did content. In DFS, I rarely did content unless when DraftKings called me when I won the golf uh, thing or whatever. But uh, with this, I just felt like I'm very passionate about it and I love talking about it. And so obviously in order to get the game to grow, people have to learn about it and it is a very complex game. And so I just thought that like, and obviously I'm older, I'm more comfortable talking now, maybe in my early twenties, if I had to do it all over again, I would definitely market myself. I would have done something like you guys did like build a content site and me and another guy are already kind of doing that. Like we're building a content site for this because I think like even the data, there's already data sites out there. I'm a data nerd and just looking at all the different things and edges, trying to figure out the fastest horses, stuff like that is also important. Did you ever, did you ever get involved when you talk to the guys about learning the, um, I don't say the algorithm, but I guess the code with respect to how these races are designed, you know what I mean? Like, because in real, in real racing, either the horses go and they go, you know, yeah. But when you're doing a virtual horse race, there has to be some kind of code or programming yeah. that that says what happens in the race. And I was always wondering, you know, uh, I, 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 it's one of these, listen, I have zillions of things that I put on my back burner that I just never have time to do. And I always meant to like reach out to them or have you put me in touch with you guys to actually go, go through, you know, how they're actually structuring races. Like, do they consider certain things that are, that are, that are real life race stuff, you know? Or, yeah. or is it just like kind of a, a random number generator that says X amount of times this guy wins? And they probably have some kind of code that says, oh, sometimes we'll have this guy win from the back. Sometimes we'll have them win on the lead. Yeah. Are there horses it's, that are- I'm pretty lead? sure it's an RNG, but the way they've designed it is try to mimic real life. I remember when me and you did our discussion, Yeah, they had went from V2 beta to V3. And one of the big changes they had made was in V2, the best horses just won all the time. And I think we even talked about this, how- the money maker effect in poker, you need like long shots. And so yeah. they upped the variance a lot and they lowered where it's still like strong horses win, but it's not just guaranteed, you know, it might be like 30%, 40%, which mimics more real life compared to, um, you know, whatever. But as far as the actual, they don't really talk about it a lot because they obviously don't want you to break the code. And they did have experience uh, in an app called Horse Racing Manager. I think they had like 12 million downloads. It was like the whole reason Ian created this game, Ian Cummings is the CEO, and he was a uh, Madden creative director, and then he got into building horse racing games. And in Horse Racing Manager, people bred, they paid the team 
but they didn't actually make any money, the, the individuals. And so Ian was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if like the web three version of this, if people own their horses, just like real life, they could profit from it, et cetera. And in that game, it seems like their, their algorithm for breeding kind of got broken. So they've got extensive uh, research and all that into refining and refining and refining and just getting better. And so he doesn't really talk about the actual code. All you know is like we have six stats and you know that certain stats play at different distances better. And we're all just chasing like the top stats and getting what you're seeing on the screen. These stars, they kind of give you a little bump as far as the preferences, stuff like that. I'm curious. So do they, is there a lot of people that play this game that are from overseas or is it mostly United States? Um, yes. In fact, uh, I don't know if you're big into Zed, but one of the big guys who just came in recently, I, and I say recently as far as like two or three months, his name's Ted Racing, and no one really knows him in Discord, but he's from France, uh, I think, and he by himself bought like $250,000 worth of horses on Monday. The only reason I mention it is because so many of these races are all right to left. And 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 yeah. there are no rights to left racing in the United States. All of the rights to left racing is in Europe. So I'm just I was just wondering why there's yeah so they've set up the majors to where there's a left turf, a right turf, a left dirt, and a right oh, dirt. Know, but like in real life racing, like the only time there's ever right to left would be is in Europe. So that's why yeah. I was wondering if maybe like there was a yeah. There's I mean huge tables are from Australia, um, England. Gotcha. you know, throughout Europe, it's a worldwide thing. And I've actually been, I've probably met like 10 or 12 people. It's kind of like poker in our early days where, you know, these guys online and, you know, living in Vegas, obviously I've had a lot of these guys that either come here on work or whatever. And so I've got to meet a lot of them. I met some in San Diego and I actually got to go to the Derby this year and meet the team. Also the picks you gave me were amazing. And I have a great story about that. Uh, we got to the track a little late, so I missed the first race on the first day, which is a Friday, and I took your sheet, and that first one won. Oh, and then really? I bet the rest of them on Friday, they all lost. So yeah. we got there Saturday, and I think we pulled, like, three winners, and I remember you even telling me, like, in the main derby, like, you didn't really have a strong feel, but the one that you did, like, got scratched. That's true. And, That's right. And I was like, I didn't, and so I gambled and I bet on the Japanese horses, I think. Okay. And, and uh, so we ended up breaking even because we went big in the Derby. But one of the picks you made, it was like a 35 to 40 to one. And at the window, I'm waiting. I get the thing. We're walking. So we're in the infield, which I kind of hate. Next time we'll always go to a box. Like the infield at the Derby is a disaster. Me, my mom, my fiance were there. So we're walking back. To, all you can do is look at the screen from the infield. Really, you can't like see. And so then I look at our ticket and I'm like, damn, I bet the wrong horse. I bet the six to one. And I looked up at the board and the one that you liked at 35 to one was like 42 to one. Okay. So I like run this like 10 minutes. I run back to the window. I get the bed in. I come back. We watch the race. The mistaken bet that I made actually pulled six to one or something. Oh, one. That's yeah. So that was a fun experience uh, just to meet the team there. They had a tent set up. And, you know, at that time, the team, the team almost went broke in mode post where this game almost didn't get off like you talked about the low money it's a beautiful post that talks about not only his grit and his just inability to give up but just talks about how tough it was to get raises and investments but once we got the gen one on the track before that about a month before crown went from like three cent to eight cent and crown is kind of how they stimulate the economy in a way it is a rake back feature in a way, but crown, you can stake it on the track. And if you stake it on the track, you get the earnings revenue. So the beautiful thing about this, if we think about DraftKings and poker, they're taking rake out of the economy. But what uh, photo finish is doing is they're giving it back to crown holders. So the 20% rate goes directly to the crown holders. And so that's the value mechanism for crown. So basically you get a web three participation in the revenue of the company. 
For example, all right. So what we did with with my with my account is is we set up an account just from zero, and we we bought uh, a horse from the marketplace. Um, for, was it six Solana or something? Uh, what's that? Wasn't it like six or seven Solana or how much did we pay for I this? Place? I don't remember. We could probably look it up, right? I think it was like 150 bucks. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And listen, it was a whole thing. And we had to set up the account. I didn't even have to get Solana. So you walked me through that. I set up a, a phantom lot a phantom wallet. I had this whole yep. thing, like growing up, right? And then and then we bought this one horse. And what was neat about it, again, from a kind of like a user experience, is you get to name it what you want, which is cool. And then you get to design your own, your own uh ownership colors, you know, and that's yeah. this kind of neat. And then you 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 enter them in races and and listen, like anything else, you know, if you want to do something well, you have to put 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 work on it. And I and I did, you know, and I, I I went and I what I would do is I would go whenever I felt like like firing it, I would click on them, and they have quote unquote recommended races, right? Yeah. So I looked and I tried to do my best to just kind of figure it out on my own, you know, and say, oh, listen, I'll maybe I'll do a maiden race, maybe I'll do one with the B plus, and you kind of like trying to figure it out and. And in fairness, you know, Mike was kept on saying, dude, just let me know when I'll find a good race for him. But you know what? I'm, let, me, let me try to lose myself first. You know what I mean? Like, this is funny because Bell's actually hit me up in DM finally. He looked at a DM I sent him for months ago. Yeah. And I was like, look, let me walk you through it or whatever. He's like, no, I want to get in there and deep exactly. dive on my own. Exactly. Blah, blah. I was like, all right, well, you just hit me up with any questions right. you right. have, whatever. And then what happened was, all right, if I'm not mistaken, the, I think Photo Finish Live moved from like beta to like live or something. And then what happened was, this is my own experience. Yeah, you thought you lost your horse. I thought I lost my horse, but no, I had to like redo something. And then they gave me like a second horse. Yeah. They gave me this unnamed one, which I figured I would deal with, you know, later, whatever it is. But it's just a trainer. It's for free. So people can get in and kind of learn how to race or where to go. Right. And me not realizing that that one month equals one year, I just figured I had time to do whatever. And, and you know what? It's like, you know how busy I am. Yeah. Dude, there were a couple of times I, I, I entered the race. I literally forgot until like two days later. And, and then I went and I, then I went and I watched it. And the, you know what I mean? So I really didn't get a chance to give myself a shot. Um, so then the other day I went and I went to, to look up here and I'm like, okay, um, bo both my horses are retired. So I'm at this point now where I either want to, um, you know, cash out and say, screw this, or maybe, maybe, maybe go on and like, and then buy another one or something like that. Yeah. Um, like the first thing I did, I wanted to make sure that I had my wallet here and when even I connect wallet, I can't even get that to show up, which is a little annoying. So click maybe on the plugin, the top, right, the plugin page. You see the little jigsaw piece, like a puzzle piece? No. In your actual browser bar. Oh, oh, here? Yeah, and see if Phantom will come up here. Yeah, now click that. Ah. And oh. then you'll have to enter your password, and then you'll be able to connect. Oh, sure. I see. Oh, that was the answer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I got it. Yeah, this is the password remembering. Hopefully, you kept that. Uh, I did. I got, key. I kept, I kept okay. the sheet. Well, no matter what, you'll be able to figure that out, even if you can't get the password. So uh, you can put the seed in if you forget it. If anyone is new to crypto or Web3 and you're deciding to get in this, when you create a phantom wallet, it'll give you a seed, basically. And you need to write down the seed or you can right. put it in a, a document if you can encrypt right. it. But you basically need to keep that because if you ever lose your password, forget it, or the wallet kind of uh, gets corrupt or something, you can always... Uh, restore it, and that's where your funds are. It's basically like the key to your your. So safe. if I want to enter my secret thing instead of instead of reset it, um, I don't know. You, you can reset your password. Your... Uh, I've never actually did it with Phantom. I've did it on my ledger for sure. Um. All right. Well, we're gonna have to connect the wallet eventually because I, I yeah. connected it on my phone. I would. I would try the reset. All right, let's try that then. So let's let's connect the wall. Oh, so we have to go through the yeah, the jigsaw phantom. All right, so let's let's forgot forgot pass or no, go back actually, and maybe click unlock and see what happens there. Oh, okay, so yeah, now go forgot. And uh, then go reset secret phase maybe. All right, so yep. oh, we can import. Uh, I, do I wouldn't do this live. No, no, um, I'll do it all yeah, time. for I'll sure. Do it all yeah. Um. Yeah, but I do want to do it. Um, I have it. 
I also have to pull up that 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 phrase, that thing again, right? Don't want to. Yeah, get... and it's cool because even the betting now has started to take off on the pools. So what they're doing is like all like all the marketplace and breeding fees that they collect have been going back into the game to either juice the races and make them higher entry fees or juice betting pools. Oh so God. now there are betting pools that have like $500 in them. And I've been trying to create models to beat these. And I've been thinking, what would cheats do if you know that a two to one horse, if you get two to one on this horse, it's a very good value, but there's also another horse at six to one. And on this, you can only bet like win or in the win or most of the juice. So you can only bet to win. And so I'm thinking like, what is like the most EV way when you're betting like two or three ways, is that even smart? Or do you try to pick one horse? Like, how did you do that during your betting career? Yeah, so typically, um, usually when you bet two horses to win, you're kind of like, you're kind of negatively correlating yourself. You know, uh, it's, it's usually not a good idea to bet two horses to win. You should probably just play, if you like two horses have good EV, you should probably just play them in exactas. And there, there are, are there separate exacta pools here or no? Or no exactas at all? No, not yet. And right now I think it's called paramutual basically, but it's yeah. basically like the pool is there and you can only bet, you know, the win pool or the place pool or the show pool. And oh, obviously okay. they're going to try to get the rest of that stuff. And I think that, is where the true unlock of with this game would be. You know, they're already partnered with Kentucky Derby and Churchill Downs. But if you get this in a casino where you see the virtual horse racing bets and stuff like that, um, I think like now it's basically being stimulated with the crown because the crown is worth so much today. But obviously the whole long-term vision is that the betting will subsidize the racing. And if that happens... I think it's like really wills up. Yeah. So let me, let me do this right now. Hold on. Uh, let me just, un, I don't want to ruin this. But yeah. Then, just if just, you want to share my screen, I'll just go through stuff, how much I've won. Yeah. Let's <laughs> I'm do, second in, in the year right now. So that's kind of fun. So I'm going to stop sharing. I think you can share your screen. Can you? Yeah. Let me hide some things real quick. So I don't get hacked. Host disabled participant screen sharing. I got Unbelievable, Eric. I'm the worst. Here it is. Uh, okay. One participant can share. It's it, multiple participants can share simultaneously. No, it says share screen. Uh, advanced sharing option. Oh, wait, wait. All participants. Sorry. All participants. And uh, okay. should. Oops. Uh, it's unshare. Stop share. Okay, you should be good. Yeah, I'm good. So I'm going to do my secret recovery phrase. Yeah. Let's see if that works. Yep, I think so. So just kind of highlighting some things he says. It kind of gives you a leaderboard. It'll tell you like the best horses. And season nine actually just started on Monday. So you can see some horses have already run or won $1,600 in just probably one or two races. Uh, but I'm Tombstone Stables. So, so far this season... $3,800 in winnings, but obviously if you look at buy-ins and stuff like that, you can go to individual stable stats and look at like season nine and you can include the USD value. And one of the values and what's really helping a lot of people's bottom lines and ROI is this crown. And so in a lot of the races, we're getting probably about 60% of the entry fee. So we're putting, let's say a hundred dollars up in the race and then we're getting about 60 percent of that back in crown uh crown today is worth about 45 cent i think and it's went up as high as 70 cent and it started our first three four months of racing it was about four cent and even at four cent it was almost a 15 to 20 percent rake back system which wasn't terrible at all when you talk about a zero sum game but if we look at some upcoming races, we actually have one starting in a minute. And if we look at my stable, it's grown huge. I have about 170 horses now. I, wow. It's insane. I got some of these S pluses are great. I actually bought this horse. It's my biggest purchase in the past two months. Quicksand, I think it'll be a Kentucky Derby contender. When it hits the track, I paid 13 grand for that. Uh, and then if we just look at the stable stats life, 
if I had just kept all the crown, I've obviously sold some and then I stake the rest. So I probably tried to do about half and half, but the entire value of just racing since we talked, we went live in March or April yeah. is 113,000 at today's That's awesome. price. That's great. Yeah, it's absolutely. All right. Let's let, let's, let's unshare this now. I um, should okay. be good now to do my, Oh, I'm not, oh, I don't want to, Hold on, I don't want to undo the meeting. Hold on, if I can do that. Um, yeah, don't do that. Share a screen. Uh, okay. Oh, perfect. We're uh, back. So th there is a little bit of a problem which we're going to get to. Is I don't know if I can add to this wallet from my. You know what's easy though is they added a Google Pay option and a credit card option. So oh. if you wanted to buy, you could just even better do that. So it's so so what what do I so what do I want to do here? So so first of all, let's talk about crowns for a second. All right. So I have a crown balance of three hundred and forty two point two one. So what what does that mean? That was kind of like FPPs in poker. That was kind of like uh... except well, like I uh, so the crown is basically um, there's these if you click on this PFPs, what we talked about earlier, their initial mint, and those PFPs, if you stake them they give you crown. So you can buy these, you see, and then it'll tell you how much allocation and remaining crown they have. And so over 26 months, they give you crown on a per diem basis, basically. And so this is where it all began. And so I think there'll be 250 million crown lifetime. And I think there's about 60 or 70 million crown in circulation today. But most of the people who have crown have all these PFPs they stake it on the track. And when they stake it on the track, all the 20% of race rake basically gets divided amongst all of them. What do you mean stake it on the track? What does that so mean? So if you click on, you see where the crown thing is. If you click on the one beside that, that says zero, this is what crown is. It's basically a staking mechanism to earn the track revenue. Click on it. So last month, last season, there was $330,000 in rake. Where am I so, looking? So basically you see this, these are the different tracks you can stake on. If you slide down a little, there's five. Oh, I see. And, and so you can see how much crown is actually staked on all of the tracks. It looks like it's about 40 million total. So about two thirds of the circulating crown is actually staked on the track. And so there's some people I think who have earned maybe $20,000 just staking their crown this month, which is, I think the APY on it right now is 20%, but per, I think it was 0.67 crown per derby or 0.67 derby per crown is how much you earn. Now derby is 180th of a dollar. So 80 derby equals a dollar. It's kind of like their stable coin. And if you know anything about global poker and how they did their poker economy, you basically bought tokens. You know, you have this token economy, which I guess is a way to legally make this possible. Right. But the crown is basically like, so last month there was 330,000 in rake and all of the crown stakers get divided amongst your portion. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so, so what, if you think so what about- am I to, so What am I supposed to do with this, with this crown? So you can stake it, you can sell it to maybe buy another horse. Um, you know, you, right now you have $170 worth basically, or 150, which is kind of fun that you bought a horse. Yeah. you never raced the horse. You actually lost money on the horse. We yeah. saw it only hit the podium once. Yeah. You got this crown and the crown basically paid for your, right. your horse. That's so right. you are like the exact worst possible outcome as a horse right. owner. And right. even you profited. Like right. if that's not a marketing scheme. I don't know right. what it is. But what am I supposed to, what, what should I do with it now? Should I use this to buy a new horse? I and mean, what do you think I should do with it? I mean, or... well, if you want to buy a new horse today, even on a market, I think your best bet to buy a horse would probably be about seven or $800. There are A's out there. There's some A pluses, but if you truly wanted to get involved in the game, like the market has went up so much, even a month ago, it was like less than it is today. We just keep rising in prices, but each month we're going to start rising in population. So the supply is going to start going up and you would think that prices will go down. Uh, if you wanted to get involved in the game, I would tell you, did you ever bet claimers or go to claimers or do any of that? I didn't do anything. 
I, I no, I, I meant in real life. Oh yeah, I claimed horses and owned horses and stuff. So like that. this is where you're gonna love it. We have claimers every day, and now they have claimers up to 250k Derby, which is three thousand dollar horses. I race these every Jeez, day. Gosh, really? And so they are they're down from like 50k Derby. So you can and it's a great way that I tell new people because they come in and if you buy a foal, you know you have to wait two months, and you know how it is. You could lose. You, you forget that you even have a freaking horse right. in two months. Right, so right. the claiming game, I think, is a great way to get involved and just watch the claiming races at the 50K level, which is a $700 horse, basically. And just look at those. And then your, your whole idea with the claiming game is try to put your horse in where you can win but won't get claimed, you know? Like, yeah, that's right, kind right. of like the, the fun part and the strategy of everything. And so... As my stable grows, obviously I have a lot more expendable horses. And if they don't have breed value and they're a colt for me, I'm actually looking at the claiming game and doing that daily. And so that's where but, I would tell you to But right now it. these crowns, should I just keep them here? I mean uh well, if you're not gonna sell them, definitely stake them. Um, you know, well, 340. Well, or should I use them towards the new whatever a, a horse that I want to buy? I mean, yeah, like, I mean, if you wanted to take the crown and sell it, you would get about 170 bucks. And the way oh, so I've been would sell that and then yeah. use that money to buy the horse. Yes. And um, there's no mechanism to do it on site. I think if you go to uh crown, oh, click on the crown page. Let's see actually if they've done it. I don't think. Oh, you mean to actually sell the crowns? Yeah, click on the crown. I know they did a plug-in. Where am I? No, right? you, you were right. It's between stats and PFP on the left side. It's on the left side. It says crown. Okay. Oh, yeah, you can. So if you connect your wallet, you can swap the crown for USDC right away. Is that what I, is that, I mean? Or do, you, or do you think it's better EV to just stake it on the track? I mean, right um, now. Well, you know, I think with if you have $170 staked, you'll probably make... Uh, let's see, I had 15,000 staked USD and I probably made $200. So, you know, one seventieth, uh, what is that? $2 you would make. I think that you, I don't know. I, it really depends on what you want to put in the game, your stuff. You could sell it. You could stake it. If you stake your $140, I think you'll probably make two or $3 on the month. Let me ask, let me ask you this. If, if we, um, if 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 we decide that we want to go, what I think I'm going to do is, unfortunately, I have I have to go in like 15, 20 minutes, so I can't do this now. But 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 I think what we should do to continue to to this project is is let's is why don't we look into maybe me claiming something in the next like week or so, you know? Perfect. And, and maybe during that time, you could just pay attention every day and just check a few claiming horses out at the lower level or races, and just kind of get a feel for it. So by the time we talk, I can kind of guide you a little better. Yeah. And, 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 and then what we'll do is now, let me ask you what, what now, again, I didn't realize that, that you had to race these things more often than you did. So, so, yeah. so, so if, if, if I'm going to claim a horse, like how often am I expected? You know what I mean? To race Every 24 to 48 hours. Oh, and really? me, that I'm much? an EV guy, right? Like think oh, about our background and oh, stuff. Well, okay. Cause that's something interesting because yeah. I, one thing that was kind of cool that I noticed was when I raced a horse then I tried to race him again a couple of days later and said this horse, it says he's tired. Oh, you're right. In V3, you had to wait 48 hours before you could race. Now you can even risk it. You can race in a 20 to 24 hour window, but you have between a two to 10% chance of injury. Right. If you get injured, you have to pay a vet bill and you have to sit out for 48 hours. That's great. So I don't usually do that unless there's back to back really positive EV races, you know? Uh, so, that, but, so, it's, so it's so it's definitely an effort. Um, I got to think about what I want to do with it. Um, yeah, and think I about what, what you want to invest. You know, because you know, listen, I'll put a thousand bucks or whatever. Yeah, you know, if, it, if it's fun, you know what I mean. But uh, but again, this, this this the result of like forgetting about it and then having the horse retired is not an option for me. So I have to I have to really make sure that I can commit. Yeah. To, so we're gonna have to like so it's gonna be having to invest in the horse and then literally race it every two days, which means. I would race it every 24 hours if there's right. a schedule, oh. but the schedule cadence kind of lends to, you'll probably only find your preferred distance every 48 hours. Now in claiming, you don't necessarily have to go with your specific distance because 
the claiming horses vary in strength a lot more than say a B plus restricted race will. Um, and so that's some of the nuance that we'll get into. And that's like really what makes the game uh, very in depth and complex uh, in now, my now, opinion. What, now, what are we, now what are we doing with this bad boy? So put them out to stud, put them out to stud, just put in 4,000, which is the minimum. I doubt you'll get any breeds, but you never know. Maybe someone will pay you fifty dollars like to breed with your horse. You know, it's like Do you have to click this or no? Just just put up just the click. Spot. Just yep. All right. So, worst case, nothing happens, right? So if you click in Doc Holiday, just type in Doc Holiday. It's my best stud, and I've got two other studs that have. So right there, in Tombstone Stables. Nope, you had it right. Oh, go take one. Yep. Oh, two more. Yeah, right there. So I charge $375, so 30,000 Derby, so 30, and you can breed 35 times. Okay. He's such a stud. The ladies love him that he he's he'll sell out this month. So, nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah, it's it's uh it's fascinating. I I'm loving it. I'm enjoying it. I'm so passionate I'm, about I'm, it. I'm I'm psyched for my uh I'm psyched for think of the, my new names. I got to bring up all my other poker accounts. Oh yeah, like because I'm Tombstone Stable, so I'm like Cowboys and Indians, right. and well, so and obviously Steve, not Bay, I mean, yeah, so, it's it's a uh, it's a cool team, you know. Some people, and you know, once you start getting this many horses, it's tough to come up with some names for sure. How's the DFS season going for you? I've I've seen some tweets and some sweats i think you won 100k is that right yeah no the, the, it's been it's been doing well and the content has been it's been challenging because i'm trying my best to do things differently and i'm trying my best to to teach more than give picks i'm trying i'm doing a lot of stuff with saber sim and doing actual live lineup builds and those are kind of fun you know when, when i actually build it live and it wins you know whatever and uh uh so that 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 that's kind of cool i've been playing all the different sports but the content piece is trying to i'm trying to also make this live sweat idea work you know yeah. I, I put to, to get people to actually look at lobbies and i sometimes the play-by-play -play of like the have you used tiktok at all for that what's that have you used tiktok at all for that no i'm just we're just using um i'm just using the live the youtube live and and whatever you know um and uh but but again it's a weird construct because it's not like poker where i could show my screen and like show how i'm playing like yeah. because because when you're playing in DFS, you're putting your lineups in, but the sweating is like just sitting back and just watching the results. Yeah. So it's it's tough. It's the same thing with the horses on how to market it. You know, even you watch the DraftKings uh, yeah. marketing stuff and it's like, oh yeah, you're celebrating a win or whatever. But the actual process is agonizing really. Yeah. Like my Sundays, I feel like such a dinosaur in DFS now. I'm probably on the verge of retirement, especially have you, have when you I gotten, just- Have you gotten into all the, all the contest sim stuff or no? Um, with the Saber Sim, not it's, Saber Sim. No, it's like no, 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 it's different now. So, so no, now I've only sites, done football all sites, showdown. All the sites have now graduated to something called contest sims, which oh, it does yeah. is it creates like these 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 mock fields of li lineup fields, yeah. and it's comparing your lineups to an assumed field of lineups, and that's like the big bone of the big point of contention right now is whether you're supposed to use contest sims or not. It's See, it's I've, what I did, Eric, is I told myself I'm going to lock myself in. I'm going to create my own projections. I'm not going to listen to anything. And yeah. that's how I'm going to be contrarian. Yeah. And that isn't working. Well, you'll, I mean, you'll, I've had you'll, you'll, get crushed. you'll get crushed doing that. Yeah. I, I'm a dinosaur. And so I just feel like that's I've just right. enjoyed it. And I've honestly, I told you the last time we talked, I always sell half my action. So for me, losing, I can take it, but losing well, for other it, people. Put it, dude, you can put the stuff on stakings. I mean, like, you can get. Yeah, like, but I just don't. I feel so bad when I lose other people's I know, money. I, hear you. I would just rather lose my own money. Like, and so with how much and how well the horse is going, me and my fiance, we're getting married in May. Hey, you know, you go. Let's go. And sure. we're talking about buying our house. And I'm just like, I'm tired of losing 3k a week on DFS whenever I'm basically printing yeah. and having so much fun in the horses. And I truly believe like, if you're not hundred percent all in and passionate, yeah. maybe it's time to just give up. That's what I did with poker in a way. Um, even though I played the world series almost every day this summer, but you know, you know, it was fun. So I got two, I got three cool poker stories for you. First of all, I don't know if you saw it. I don't know if I spoke to you about, it, but I, I, I bit the book, not bit the bullet. Every once in a while, I feel like coming on and talking about poker and stuff like that. Nobody really wants to hear my shit nowadays. Yeah. Anyway. But uh, I went on Berkey's podcast like a couple of months ago. I don't know if you've ever seen the OnlyFans stuff. 
Um, I've watched maybe a few of them. I went on and and do. We talked about the old days and this, and all for like an hour and a half. It was so much fun. You got to check that out if you're bored one day. I love Berkey. Every time I play with him or run into him, it's always such a fun experience. And that's my favorite thing about poker. Honestly, that's the thing that makes me want to go play, especially at the World Series, is just seeing everyone and yeah. having, you know, like that's what I enjoy but, about but it. it the actual cool. playing is agonizing. We, we, we talked we talked about the poker stuff, and I, every once in a while, whenever I get juiced up, but it's such a time commitment. And then I got two cool poker stories to tell you. So my friend still plays and he's he lives in jersey so he plays these wsop circuit events online you know because in jersey yeah. you could do that and he keeps on keeps on offering me hey why don't you come down and see my new place you know we'll play and i'm like i don't know how to play anymore you know i can't freaking play i was barely ev when when i stopped playing you know what I, mean? <laughs> I mean i'm probably i have no shot against these freaking wizards now and yeah. like, that's all i'm no don't worry about that so he kept on saying just come down come down hang out and I said, no, I'm not doing it. And then finally I said, you know what? I haven't seen your house. I haven't seen your new baby. You know, I'm, I'm a bad friend. I'm going to do it. So I set up a WSOP circuit, a WSOP online account. And I was all ready to go. I put a deposit down, $2,000. I was going to play. Listen, I haven't played in like 100 years. I'm going to play a $2,000, eight max, you know, whatever it is. Like good luck sheets. And then like an 888 or something like that. And then the day before, his whole family got COVID. So we had to cancel oh. I'm like, all right, no problem, whatever. And then, like, a couple weeks later, I said, you know what? He says, you know, we're still, we still have a couple events left. Okay. So I went down there. I drove down there to New Jersey. I put my laptop and the whole thing. And um, and there was a two thousand dollars eight max and an eight eighty eight with re entries. It was like the last event of the series. The two K event got freaking canceled because of the overlay, right? I'm like, Thanks. oh, they canceled because it wasn't gonna hit unbelievable right so Jeez, then, i hate these schemes then there was an 888 dude i weaved my way and got 11th freaking place oh how out, did you go out like, how did you go out um i guess king to ace jack or ace jack ace i i you know he had the he had the best but dude i played just like i did in two freaking 2008 it's probably even more profitable now than it was then. I just did whatever. And, you know, and and he was telling me, oh, you this wizard here, this wizard here. But there were some guys in the old days. So I went and I, and I got the 11th place. And now I'm like back into freaking retirement, you know. But, oh, yeah. But well, at least good. you didn't get hooked again because I played good. the series. Oh, yeah. And I, I started out just going deep in everything. I got like an 18th and something. Then I got, it must have been COVID. I was knocked on my ass sick for two weeks. And I kept trying like three, four days rest. Then I would go play. You know how it is. Like when yeah. you got the itch, you feel like you're whatever. I went like over the last 15 and then I ended up playing the following two Sundays online because I just had such the itch. And I was just like, why am I doing this? I don't even enjoy doing this. It's just like, whatever. But I mean, obviously the world series is a, is a unique animal. And when you live here and all your friends are playing, it's tough not to go play. And I felt yeah. Anyway, you know, I'll, I'll go. I'll, I, you know, one of these days I'll play again. You know, it's just such a such a hassle with the live and like all this stuff too. Yeah, you won't put three to five days of your schedule. Yes. Um, I mean, even now I'm 37 and like I'm in bed by 9:30 every night. So you're in the series. Be in like the seniors event soon. You know, it's like. Uh... <laughs> yeah, that's when I'll be plus EV again in 18 years. All right, man. All right, I'm gonna let you go, but but cool. I want I want to do this again in like a week or so, and 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 get myself a horse. For those of you that that this is the first time you're watching it, it's it's listen. For, if you're young and into like NFTs and stuff like this, is gonna come really really naturally to you. If if you're not, it does require a little generational, you know, education to learn how this works a little bit. You know, I mean, I'm I'm pretty good even being an old man and, and yeah, still you connected the Solana wallet. You had yeah, all that set up in I mean, five I, minutes. I, I know enough that I'm with a little bit of guide saying, but it definitely is. If you have the time to commit to it, it really is a lot of fun. It's a fun thing to do. You, the, the virtual horse racing thing. And, and if you want to take it seriously, you know, like anything else that's worth doing, it, it's hard, right? I mean, like if it, with anything worth, worth doing, it's hard to be good at it, but but if you're, if you're someone like Mike who can commit, you know, his brain power to learning something, now there's actually like real money that you can make in it. I mean, like we were, yeah. you don't remember, like, you remember talking about like making like a couple of thousand bucks or something like that, you yeah. know, and I'm like, why are you doing this for, for this little money? But you're building like, you know, making over a hundred thousand dollars in a year doing this and with, with room for growth. I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's not bad, man. That's really yeah. not bad. And if you want to learn about it, just follow me on Mike, Mike Sowers with two S's on Twitter or 
if you see photo finish live the join discord the discord and the learn to play oh. pages are probably like your item if you're interested at all either hit me up ask me questions or just join that and the community is so amazing that's what's really cool is there's probably a thousand stables now when we talked there was probably like 200 wow. you know and so there is seemingly a lot of growth a lot of new people coming in and trying to get you know to learn it all is, is impossible without asking a lot of questions and getting like the community to help you hey always good to hook up man and we'll, we'll, we'll catch up next week yeah for sure good luck in the df streets maybe i'll check you out on these uh sims one day maybe whenever i want to play again just just whoever whoever i play just do the opposite all right i'll talk to you later all right later